Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wi-Fi. Today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, these old world maps. Why? Because I think there's a lot of confusion about these maps in general. I think people... I'm not sure. I think because the lands aren't there today, somehow discredits these maps. And then people just assume that these were inaccuracies or mythical lands or made-up places. Because, you know... They had multiple sources that they were compiling together, so of course there's errors, right? Or they were bad at telling the position of the North Pole. So because of that, everything in their maps are an error. I mean, you can choose to believe whatever you want. You might look at these maps and you might say, yeah, a bunch of mythical places here. Friesland, strange shaped South America, you know, things like Antarctica being massive, etc, etc. I've been trying to make this video for months, and every time I press record, something discourages me or I find some new information that just prevents me from continuing. But today I decided, you know what, just make the video. So some points I want to make about these maps in general, these old world maps, they're, they're all very similar, all the features are very similar, and they span hundreds of years. We're talking like from late 1300s to early 1700s. Or even late 1700s, I should say. We're talking 500 years of history. 500 years of the world using the same map with the same places, same features. 500 years. It took Marco Polo several years of his life to journey across Asia. One lifetime. And he was able to explore all of Asia. Well, not all of Asia, but he walked through Asia and then cruised along the coast for a while back home. But... You know, the point is that in his lifetime, which was just a few years, I think it was like a 20 year journey or something like that, maybe not that long, he managed to cover that distance. One person. And here we have a 500 year history of people using these same features on this map to go places and do things. So the first little anomaly that I want to point out that is uh, the same on all these maps is right here down to South America, where South America touches the land of fire, right? So this feature here where South America is like, you know, maybe 10 miles distance between here and Antarctica, which today is like nowhere near that close. All right, we have like, you know, 1499 map, almost touching. They're almost connected. The Orontius map of the world, South America, it's almost touching. Antarctica, here again. South America, almost touching Antarctica. So it's curious, isn't it? How people could have gotten this wrong for 500 years. We've got the Northern Islands up here. On all these old world maps, they all show this feature of these islands, right here. The Orontius map has it. Why do so many old world maps feature these islands and this strangely shaped Greenland? And of course, Friesland, right here, which no longer exists today. We have magnetic mountains in the north, which are no longer there. We have many maps like this. Lots of them showing Friesland in the corner, which means that it was a very important place. It's a very important island. Greenland looking all strange. It's actually a lot smaller on these old world maps than it is today. This tiny little land called Greenland. A magnetic mountain in the middle. Got the land of the Pygmies here. And a bunch of other little places that they're talking about that are really nice throughout the year. I mean, uh, during the summer months and stuff. Take a look at Greenland, the way they mapped Greenland back in the day. You know, small little elongated piece of land here. Friesland, obviously, always Friesland there. Freelanda. And here you've got two cities even in Greenland. Two established places. See, right here, two places. Very high up north. Look at the shape of Greenland. It's like really weird, isn't it? And uh, I'll explain why. This is curiously still here today. This exact piece of land. See? Freelanda. Friesland. Right there. On all these old world maps, they have this island. Of course, it's not there today, though. It actually does still exist. It's just not an island anymore. Another curious thing about these maps is that there's no snow or ice shown at the poles or anywhere. Doesn't even talk about it, doesn't talk about glaciers or land of ice or nothing. Snow, none of these places. In fact, this is called the land of fire. The land of fire. Which is now a giant land of ice. Nothing to do with fire down there. Also, what's interesting is that 
this land goes all the way up to Tropic of Capricorn. You know, the furthest these lands go inward is 60 degrees latitude, just beyond the 60 degrees latitude, which today, Antarctica doesn't even come beyond the Arctic Circle. Antarctic Circle. It's all contained below the Antarctic Circle, which is crazy, because I mean, if you look at this map and all maps from late 1300s to the late 1700s, they all show Antarctica looking like this massive piece of land. No snow, no ice at the poles. Also, if we compare these longitude and latitude lines to modern day maps, we find that none of this stuff lines up. You know, like if you look at the edge of uh, North America here, it almost like follows this straight line along the edge of this map, but that's nothing like what it is like today. And also over here, you can see on the other side where Russia is, also follows a pretty straight line. And the distance between these two lands is only about 10 degrees of arc along most of these two degrees of longitude. 10 degrees between them, even less than sometimes in some places. So it's like nothing like what it is today. This is another interesting feature that's found on most of these old world maps is this Caspian Sea. It's elongated in this on these maps, you know, it's almost 20 degrees of arc here. Caspian Sea is 20 degrees wide, 10 degrees high. Yeah, that's insane. So right now in on our modern day maps, it's just a tiny little crushed up sea. Just this little side here only. It's not this whole thing. You can see here, elongated basically. Caspian Sea covers 20 degrees by 10 degrees on this map. You know, look how close these two lands are now. They're less than 10 degrees apart. You got Friesland on this map. So blah, blah, blah. I don't want to spend a lot of time going over things that everybody else has already covered with these maps. I just want to show you some of the things that I've discovered. Maybe will help people understand these old maps a little better, hopefully. So here we have the North Pole, old world map, showing the islands of the North. So just for illustrative purposes, I'll just demonstrate what occurred to these islands. So this is how they were, and this is how they ended up. If you study what happened here on the sea floor, it shows how this place was split apart. And these islands got crushed into other lands, basically. Something catastrophic happened here, which caused all this to happen. This part of the world split apart, right here, this part, okay? Everything just got crushed and ripped apart. This island became part of Greenland, here, this stuff, right here, this, all became crushed together into Greenland. This island got crushed into Northern Canada. This island went into Russia. The other one sank beneath the ocean, completely sank. It's Dodger land as they call it now, or whatever. It's this area down in here, which just sank into the ocean. Now this is completely buried under ice and under a massive ice cap, this whole place. So everyone is wondering where these islands went to. While well, they're still there, they've just been crushed into the lands around them. They're just not there like like they used to be. Okay, so it's pretty clear. This is the lower part of Greenland, and if you combine this island into it, it becomes the size that it is today. I don't know exactly which lands got consumed by this event, but Greenland became one piece of land afterwards. Everything got twisted, crushed, because it has nowhere to go. It has nowhere to expand, so it has to just crush in on itself. And you'll see how this how this all unfolded here. I'll show you how it all unfolded. So if we look at the seafloor spreading geology, if you follow back this pattern from the thinnest part to the thickest part, or vice versa, from the thickest part of the spreading to the thinnest part of the spreading, this is the pattern that it makes. Here is exactly how the Earth was expanded, I guess you could say, or how the forces were acting upon it during this event. And it happened catastrophically, it happened very rapidly. There's no other way to explain this, but this area basically exploded. This area blew up. Something something massively disastrous happened here to cause this part of the earth to basically be ripped apart. It was just completely ripped apart here. This part right here, this is the center line. This, this, this arc basically represents like the explosive force that happened. You can see like this massive energy wave that went out. It's so hard to, to describe in words. So it's like, if you compare the old world to the new world map here, we can see how lands transformed. You can see how Antarctica was completely pushed down You can see how these lands were crushed in and formed the mountain ranges that we see today. Not only that, but on the other side here, 
we had this other force that was pushing this way, so this, these things kind of like crushed inward on itself. The, the land had nowhere else to go, so it just turned into mountain ranges. The northern islands got crushed down into these lands. These rivers here got sealed up now. They've been crushed down and sealed up into this continent. Caspian Sea is now crushed up into itself because this part of the land was forced over this way. Here you can see the Caspian Sea and where it used to be and how it uh, broke apart, split apart here and ended up becoming the Gobi Desert, possibly. All these islands got crushed in and moved over. Australia became its own land afterwards. It used to be connected to Antarctica, but this part of the land got ripped apart here, right here. They were forced apart from each other. Northern islands were pushed down and crushed down into northern Russia now, but it actually caused so much destruction up here. Half of this stuff sank into the ocean, that's why they've got these shallow seas up there now. All you have to do is compare these two maps. There's no plate tectonics or subduction going on or any of that stuff. It was pure explosive force here that crushed all this stuff into itself. Really simple. All right, look here. You can see. Look at this part of the map. All of this land was blown over. It had to be it had to move because this part of the world was ripped apart. It was split open here and everything was forced over to the side. Giant explosive area here. Boom. And it forced everything over. It forced everything over. And then in this side where the where the explosive force occurred, some kind of force occurred here that ripped everything apart. This crushed itself that way while this part of the world was forcing everything this way. And then of course we have this natural splitting event here between South America and Africa, which uh, didn't help things. Everything here in the southern lands got forced downward, it was all pushed down. That's why Antarctica is now like one of the highest continents in the world. 4,000 meters or something on average. And it's all below the uh, Antarctic Circle now. See? It just takes a little bit of looking at things to realize what actually happened. So this entire thing just kind of ripped itself apart, crushed everything into itself. Real easy to see. And all of this occurred at the same time. This all happened at the same time. It was the reason why ancient civilizations are gone. It's the reason why all the uh, stone monuments and stone buildings and things that we find today are there now and they're all completely buried and destroyed. It was because of this event. Something happened to the earth caused it to, uh, I don't know, it maybe expand, or maybe it never expanded, but things just got crushed into itself. But it does seem like distances were definitely changed here, and I'll, I'll show you how South America looks today. If you look here, you can see how this part of the land of fire is actually part of South America now. So this part of the land got fused into South America, and it now stretches down and tries to touch Antarctica today. But of course, something ripped through here and caused this strange little formation that we see here today, which looks like a ball was rolling through here or something pushed this over. You know what I'm saying? Like a, something pushed all this over. Curiously, it matches this exact feature over here by Cuba or in the Gulf of, um, Gulf of Mexico area. These islands, they're identical to these islands down here. If you want to find Friesland, all you got to do is look here where it ended up. It sank completely into the ocean. Friesland is gone because it's completely sank into the ocean. This is uh, documented in history. And the Oralinda book talks a lot about Friesland and what happened to it. And here you can see it below the ocean. You can see it here. Same features, the same land features, except that it's now been washed beneath the waves. There was even histo history of people coming through the Straits of Gibraltar and ending up in like a muck of the ocean because it was like uh, a thick ocean with sand almost because of what happened to Friesland. Friesland had completely washed into the ocean. Everything was completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. So the question is then, how long ago did this happen and where are these maps from? If these are the old world maps of what the land looked like before this catastrophic event, before this destruction occurred, 
and destroyed all of these places, everything is gone, completely altered the face of the earth, pushed lands away from each other, created mountain ranges that are no lo- that are there now today but are no longer on the, like not shown on these maps. Australia became a place which wasn't on these maps at all. It just became a place all of a sudden. Africa would have been completely destroyed. You know, the waves would have washed over this place and just like swept this whole place clean pretty much. If it was trees and everything at one time while well, <laughs> Once the water rushed over here, it would have completely washed all this away, nothingness. Just completely swept everything clean. Every single coastal land would have been destroyed, inundated, washed, especially here. Like, this this all got crushed in underneath the land, like, pushed over. All these cities are destroyed, gone completely. There's nothing left. You would have to, they're under the ocean or they're pushed under the land now. Completely gone. How old are these maps? When did this catastrophic event occur? Because I showed you where these lands ended up today. I showed you that they're not just mythical made-up places. That they're still there, they're still here. They've just been altered by some massive catastrophic event. If you follow back these geological formations of the ocean floor, it leads us right back to somewhere around the Hudson's Bay area, Greenland area, this place in the north. This this actually follows up here um, more along the coastline before it actually terminates. So. But it still ends up in the same area. So this whole place under North America was, was like the beginning of this massive ripping apart event. And you can see where the land unzipped here, right here, with these explosive curves right here. You can see how it was forced out. And see, it's like from, from here, it, it basically unzipped. So the, all the land went this way on this side, and all the land on this side went this way. And it all got forced in and crushed in onto itself. And this spreading comes from underneath the continents. It doesn't, it's not like it's on the surface with the continents. It, it comes from underneath the continents, like a separate layer. Almost like, almost like this was the skin of the earth at one time. And then when it ripped apart, this was all like fresh open wound that healed over time. See, and if we just put all this back together, if we zip it back up, you can see how these lands were much closer together at one time. Like, these were these were pretty close together, almost like what the old world map is showing. Exactly what the old world map is showing, as a matter of fact. So the world of the 1700s, with the ships and sailing of the oceans, and the kings and the queens of the world and all that stuff, got completely destroyed. It's all gone. This river here, you can actually find it today. It's, it's still there, this formation is still there, but it's completely sealed off, whereas on these old world maps, there were cities and water running through these rivers. Here you can see it's down here now, it's all been sealed off. It's been crushed in and sealed off. All this land was crushed in and pushed up into the here and created the mountain ranges, the very thick mountain ranges that are there today. It's my opinion this is the result of a, a massive lightning discharge, and I've been talking about it on my channel for, uh, for, for the past few videos now with the Electric Earth series, so basically what happened is this something caused the Earth's electric field to discharge in a catastrophic way, which completely destroyed everything. Like, once the electric field discharged here, it, it collapsed the gases in the atmosphere, so they would all basically turn to liquids, and you have the entire atmosphere collapsing, like, into liquid, and and etc, etc. I, I talk about it for, for hours and hours about the effects of the electric field collapsing here on Earth and how it created all this stuff, like all the mountain ranges were formed in one giant connected loop of electrical discharge, even across here where the Gobi Desert is now, it was all because of a massive electrical discharge, and there was many of them. Like, when I when I say like one discharge, it's not like, you know, this was, this was a lightning bolt that was probably kilometers, m miles in diameter, like huge, massive thing going on, and it probably arced for several seconds or, or, or minutes, ripping apart the earth, completely expanding the earth, burning everything, and then soon after flooding the entire place because of the result of that. And now, with the uh, 1800s, we have our modern day world. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down in the comment section below with your comments and opinions on what you think. I'd appreciate it. I just want people to realize that these old world maps are more accurate than historians want you to believe. Just do a search on YouTube and you'll find countless YouTubers talking about the mythical lands that just were made up, the people were dumb, their technology wasn't as good as it is today, excuse after excuse. The truth is, they were very accurate. These maps were commissioned by kings of the world. They sent out ships to map the places. These people cared about what they did. They didn't um, make up stuff. Even if it was multiple sources, they have longitude and latitude to work with. They were cartographers. The whole point of cartography is to be accurate. These maps were extremely accurate for their days. 
That is what the old world looked like. You are looking at the old world here. Exactly what it looked like before it was destroyed. There were rivers in Africa. It was probably lush trees and forests there. Every place was livable at the time. It wasn't like a climate today where we have like seasons and snow and ice and stuff at the poles. That stuff wasn't, it, the earth wasn't like that before. People sailed the entire ocean everywhere. They f mapped the entire world. Anyway, that's it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Leave a like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And we'll see you in the next one, hopefully soon. Bye-bye.